Okay, hello, I'm here with Brandon Boyd, he's the lead singer of US Rockers Incubus. We have got a massive gig at the Stadium Nagara tomorrow evening. Now, Incubus have got a new record out at the moment, and it is called If Not Now When. Now, Brandon, mate, I tell you, it's been five years since your last record, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 2006 is like grenades. So, mate, can you start with telling me what was the thinking behind taking such a long break? You know? We, it was a lot of thinking, actually it was more like, oh my god, we need a break. <laughs> we, we had, at that point we'd been on the road since, uh, let's see, since 1996, actually late 95, we really started kind of like doing it and hitting it pretty hard, traveling around in a van with a trailer and everything, so. Yeah. Um, by the time we finished touring behind Light Grenades, it was sometime, I think in late 2009, and we were just burnt. We were burnt toast. Mm -hmm. So the first thing was we need a break. So we took a couple of months. We did nothing. Yeah. Then we decided to put out a greatest hits record, Monuments and Melodies, which came out yeah. um, in the middle there. We did a short U.S. tour and some South American touring. Really, when it all comes down to it, in amongst that five years, we took about two years of a hiatus. Mm -hmm. During which time, it was just really important for all of us to kind of go off into our respective corners and not be in a a big stinky rock band. So, we all, Mikey went to Harvard for two years. Yeah. So far, um, I did my first two solo art exhibitions in Los Angeles. I released a solo record. Mm -hmm. And Kenny released his fourth solo record. We were all like really busy, mm -hmm. just not being Incubus. So what it did though, which is really cool, is it, it offered us a, our first real chance at some much needed perspective mm -hmm. on what we had accomplished thus mm -hmm. far. And also perhaps where we have yet to go as a band. Yeah, I mean, you made, you made your own solo record, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, what was that experience like for you, you know, working away from your bandmates and like, you know, making your own music? And that? What was that like for you? Yeah, um, it was lots of things. It was humbling, first and foremost. It was a lot of fun. Um, I got to be uh, the control freak that uh, I had to indulge my inner control freak and do literally everything. I, I played all the instruments on the record. I, yeah. you know. The wild trapeze, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, but humbling, that's the word that comes back to it because I, I really, for the first time, I, I got a real sense of what my um, limitations were as a musician. Mm -hmm. I'm not a musician first in Incubus, I'm a singer and a lyricist first and kind of an arranger, you know what I mean? Uh, but the guys in my band are like world-class musicians. They're amazing. They're insane. Yeah. Um, like noodly, weird, nerd music geek guys. And uh, I'm not that guy on a guitar. I'm a little bit more of like campfire strummy type thing. Mm -hmm. um, so it was humbling. But it also made me very excited to come back, having had that experience. And it was fun and educational. All these things it made me really excited to come back to write music with me to this. Well, well, well now, now you are back, right? You know, you've got your new record, if not now, when, and that marks your return. So your new record, right, I, I read some of the, the critique and the people have been labeling as your, your pop record, your grown up record. You think this is a fair comment, Brandon? Sure. I've, I've, I've seen a couple of the, the critiques as well, mm -hmm. and um, first and foremost, it's fantastic to even be in a position where people are still paying attention yeah. after 20 years of being a band. Um, but it is absolutely the most deliberate record we've ever written. Um, it definitely has more of a, a pop, quote unquote, appeal yeah. than any of our other records have. Um, but I still think it's a quintessentially incubus record. It's just uh, a sort of it's just a few steps further into the evolution of our band. Um, and one of the things that I'm the most proud of about it, and I think is the thing that's going to really take time to sort of for people to, to observe about it is that um, it is a unique record. It may be sort of a, a more pop sounding record, a more sort of grown up sounding record, mm. but I think it's unique in its sentiments and in its uh, architectures and sonic architectures is quite unique, especially for what's going on in music today and rock music. So it's a bit of a grower, right? But like Brandon, I've got to ask you, like, what, what kind of record were you guys setting out to make, you know, when, when you got back together? Did you have, <laughs> did you have a plan? No, mind? no. It, it became the the it became deliberate once we were like halfway through it. Yes. we never know what kind of records we're we're trying to make. Mm -hmm. They they define themselves as they go, and mostly they define themselves in retrospect. Um, so we kind of started to understand what kind of record it was 
seeming like it was going to be about halfway through and as we were finishing it, but I don't think it will really uh, show its show its colors truly until a few years from now. Sure, and I'm sure that taking it out on the road when you get to yeah. So the song smoke. Well, I got this question right. You know, Incubus have never been a band to sort of stand still. I mean, every record there's a sort of change in a style sonically, and that. Yeah. so. Can you maybe talk about the band's desire to like, you know, do this, you know, shape shift with every record, you know, which has sort of led you to your most pop and your most grown up record? You know? Yeah, um, you know, that it's not so much that we're saying consciously that... Um, because I tell you right, Brandon, I've been talking to a lot of your fans and sometimes they, they, they pine for like... The first album in Cubus, yeah. the second album in Cubus, you know. Yeah. You're like, why can't those guys go back to that sort of thing? Yeah, I honestly think that um, I, I, I was talking with the guys in my band yesterday about this, and because um, there's a there's a core group of Incubus listeners that have that kind of started listening to us when Science came out in 1997, right. and uh, they have been kind of pining uh, for another record that sounds like Science. Mm -hmm. But I really think that uh, they would end up resenting us if we tried to make a record that sounded like science, because that was like then. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then its its relevance and its weight would really be discredited if we attempted to make a record that we thought sounded like it, and that would really be us pandering in a, in a way. So what we've attempted to do, in answering your question, what we've attempted to do over the years is uh, knowingly not repeat ourselves. Um, and write music that we feel like is coming from a place of integrity and a place of purity. So the fact that we've sort of evolved into this album, if not now when, which is definitely a more grown-up album, a more simple record, mm. is really, um, it's like a, it's a, it's a full circle. We've come all the way back around to writing a kind of music that is more simple, but potentially more profound um, in, a, in a wider sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like science and some other areas where we were being more kind of show-offy in the musicianship area, mm -hmm. which is cool, um, is uh, it lacks restraint. That's That would be the sort of criticism that I would have about it. Mm -hmm. This record is swimming with restraint. It's the, literally the anti-science mm -hmm. album. And some people will hate it for that, but some people will love it for that because they realize that it's something different, it's something unique, and then we were not pandering to our audience, you know? Yeah, but it's gonna, that's going to create a, a, a divisive quality. It has a divisive yeah, quality it, about it. It already has, you know, because I mean, mm -hmm. yesterday when I mentioned I was interviewing you, of course, the, rec the subject of science came up, you know, everybody sure. loves that record, when you do the same thing. But I'll tell you, right, it's funny you talk about um, growing up, you know, this being your grown up record, because, like, your, your first single, Adolescence, right? I, can you tell me a bit about that song? Because when I hear it, it kind of sounds like a bit analog even, you know, there's a lot of space in that record. Yeah. Different from what I've heard from you guys before. Yeah. Tell me a bit about that tune. Um, Adolescence is uh, it's probably the, like, the heaviest song on the record, too, like, as far as its, uh, its sonic quality. The rest of the record's a lot more soft in that song. Yeah. Um, but we. You know, it, that's really kind of a quintessential Incubus song, mm -hmm. as far as the way it was written. It started with uh, a guitar riff in it with, that was accompanied with a piano thing that Michael wrote. Um, and uh, I just, I wrote the lyric and the melody the way that I know how to when Michael presents me with musical ideas. And the lyric is essentially about um, our sort of, um, the youth of our species, the, the, the human species, and we sort of, we have these tendencies to marvel at how far we've come in such short periods of time, but in actuality, we're, we're really, really, really young in a cosmic sense. Mm -hmm. um, we're brand new to our planet, and uh, so it's, it's... I was attempting to make, to make myself feel better about uh, certain qualms I had about certain human behaviors that are taking place on, on the planet, so I was basically saying, like, it's okay, like we're just kids, you know? <laughs> like, give us a chance, kind of yeah, a thing. You're gonna make mistakes, you know? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Well, okay, I've got two more questions, right? I gotta, I gotta ask you about um, um, your third visit to Malaysia, right? I mean, mm -hmm. the fans here just can't seem to get enough of your band. I mean, there's a lot of love for you in Malaysia. Why do you think that is, man? I, I, I couldn't venture to say. Um, I do know that we're, we're hugely appreciative of the opportunity though. And I, I can't 
I can't say that enough. Like it, it's um, a truly wonderful thing to be able to make music for one's sense of well-being. But then, you know, and then it's an added bonus to sort of make a living making music. But that doesn't necessarily guarantee that people are going to want you to come to their, you know, to their country or to their state to, to hear it. And the fact that like people do hear is it's massive. It's huge to us. And so we will come back as long as you, as long as you guys want us. It's it's, it's awesome. We're, we're so appreciative. Okay. Well, I, I gotta ask you one more question. Right. Finally, you guys, uh, you've been away for ages, and now you're back. Right. I gotta ask you, uh, how do you see Incubus fitting in with the the rock scene of you know 2011 and that? This is a question. I think you mentioned something about still being relevant. Do you think you guys are still relevant? You know now, this day and age and that. I hope not. I've no. I've um, there there have been one of the things that we've been aware of over the over many many years is that we've never been a quote unquote cool band. We've never been the cool guys, you know, we've never been like a critic's favorite, we've never had those kind of accolades, so to speak, and there was a brief period of time where we were like, why? We think we're cool, you know, and uh, we've really come to this place, which is a wonderful place to arrive at, at you know, in your mid-30s, where you stop caring if you're going to win everyone's approval. We kind of know that we're not going to win everyone's approval. We're going to do what we know how to do to the best of our abilities. And, but what's interesting about that is the people that like our band like us because they like us, not because they think they're supposed to. Yeah. Not because somebody told them to like us or that we fit on some like critics top ten list or something like that. It'd be great to be Radiohead, but not everybody can be. Yeah, Radiohead does a great job of being Radiohead. Yeah. You know, and they're an awesome band, and um, more power to them. They are a very cool band. They probably always will be, but we're not necessarily that band. And I'm absolutely 100% cool with that. And it feels really good to be the band that we are. And I'm very proud of us and where, you know, where we are, but also how far we've come. Well, Brandon, thank you so much for the mm-hmm. time. And good luck on the rest of your tour. I understand you're going to take in Jakarta, Japan, South Korea, Manila. Mm-hmm. Amazing stuff, yeah? Yeah. All right, so good luck for the show as well. Thanks, man. Cheers. Hello, everybody. My name is Brandon Boyd. I'm from the band Incubus. And you're watching SwitchUp.tv.